we hear my body is a temple. Mm -hmm. But how often are we actually practicing that? And how are we diving into aligning it uh, with the relationship with ourself and the relationship with what we believe in and tying it all together? And so with me, this is um, a massive amount of experience. Um, I do have some background in, in having different certifications and meditation and nutrition and aspects like that. Um, I, I am not a doctor. I did not get medical school practice in this sense, um, but I've had a lot of injuries being uh, in sports my whole life, and um, I've done a lot of therapy. I've, I've learned a lot. I've done a lot of uh, transformational coaching, you know, in, in, in personal growth. Uh, so I'll be sharing a lot of my stories, what I went through, what I experienced, how much I've grown um, from from the injury to reshaping my life into something, you know, becoming everything that I didn't want to be, even though I thought that's what the world was telling me and what I should be. And then having basically a, a, a quarter life crisis slash breakdown slash epiphany at 25. <laughs> Funny how those are all kind of together, right? It's whatever, <laughs> whatever it needs to be to get your attention. Exactly. All at once at 25, you know, and, uh, and then the last 10 years from there where that's taken me. You know, if you would have said a little over a decade ago that I'd be a you know, co-founder of a, of a major religious organization in the world, I would have thought you were kind of crazy. Um, you know, and I am, yeah. <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, we all are. Um, but that's, so anyways, that's where my experience is coming from in this. And, uh, and it'll be fun to kind of share these different perspectives and ideas, um, as, as it's really body image and health and well, well being have really permeated my very existence over the last 15 years and just the ebbs and flows of what that's meant and the perspectives I've had. Uh, especially coming from, um, you know, a non-spiritual experience to a very, uh, very spiritual experience. So, you know, just like anything, I'm not going to be here to tell people what to do or how to do it, but just to share. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. And what I really appreciated when I listened to you as you were filming your course is that you were willing to share what you went through and what you still navigate through. Because I know sometimes my inner critic will, will pop up in there if I'm listening to someone who's showing me a new way of doing something. And it, of course, it will go, well, how do you know? And why, why listen to them? So internally, my, my whole process is like, why listen to them? What are they bringing to the table that you don't already have? which is such an ego center, like that's the ego and the inner critic both teaming up together to be like, don't receive new information. Are you kidding? That might turn us around and put us in a position where we're not the ones leading you. And so to proactively open myself to listening to you in a different way than, you know, like specifically as my partner in all things in life, but now to listen to you as a teacher and a guide based on what you navigated and what you're still navigating, it was amazing to be able to, to do that. And your in-depth personal experience, I feel, is going to resonate with so many people because we all have little things and our body image or even our health and well-being where we start to go down in a negative spiral and that negative brain bias you're talking about, right? And when you feel that another has done that and then come back from it, it's like, oh, that means I can do it. And knowing that you still consistently pull yourself back up out of it even though when I look at you, you look like the epitome of health and you are so fit and so handsome. Of course, I'm a little biased, but it's true. And anyone who meets you feels that presence. But that doesn't mean your inner critic isn't still in there working overtime to pull you back into being small. Yeah, that's really well said. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I genuinely don't know anyone 
who yeah, I haven't met every person in the world. So a little caveat. Um, but I really don't know anyone that hasn't had some kind of body image inner critic or some kind of health and well-being inner critic. So this is one that just, I mean, not everyone's going to relate to the exact story that I've had, but I feel like they'll be able to pull something from it uh, because I'll be touching on a lot of things that I feel like a lot of us have struggled from and with. And so when it comes to being, even if it's feeling, being overweight or feeling overweight or feeling tired or exhausted or overworked or stressed or having anxiety or fear or, um, you know, being stuck. I mean, I feel like all of us have, I know I've experienced a ton of that and, and I still do. It's like a smorgasbord that you can just pick off of today. I'm going to take this one and this one and this one. (laughs) Exactly. And so being able to kind of just talk openly and first off, let people know like, Hey, you're not alone. There's, there's a lot, like we're all here, here I am and here you are, we're, we're offering this flagship course and we're struggling with it, but it's not, it's called silence your inner critic for a reason, not shut up your inner critic or kill your inner critic or if your inner critic doesn't exist. You know, these, these are false narratives in my, in my opinion. And so silencing your inner critic is all about learning how to, when to listen and when not to. Right. Because sometimes that inner critic, and we've talked about this, can be a huge benefit. It can really help. It can grow and it can say, it can point out the areas for our personal growth. So we're not like, oh, I've just, I've, I know everything. I've got it all. Yeah. I got this. Yeah, no. An inner critic is good. It needs to permeate a little bit in that sense, just to keep us grounded, humbled, and, and, <laughs> and authentic. But like any good supervillain, right? <laughs> yes. Exactly. <laughs> But at the same time, you know, when it when it starts to take over and direct our actions, you know, control our thoughts in that sense, that's when it's important to learn how to effectively silence it. And so going through stories and experiences and sharing like we are in these different ways, you know, that's can let people know it's one, it's possible. Uh, and two, you know, it's it's not insurmountable. 